you know, one of the better players not to play in the NHL, but he had uh, some good success in the NHL. The man they call Leaping Lou, Lou Mystical, uh, did a lot on the ice and off the ice. In retirement, he gave back to uh, junior hockey on many levels. Uh, he was considered probably one of the most energetic players ever to skate with the London Knights. Now, uh, in his uh, story about his passing, the OHL said he was an undersized ball of energy. That should be an understatement. He would be uh, well known for his tenacious and uh, not say aggressive, but determined style on the ice. And every time he'd score, he'd have like a gold celebration uh, jumping. And that's where the leap and Lou came from. Now, his fans of all ages would chant Lou, Lou, Lou when he was on the ice and for obvious reasons. He could put the puck in net. He was a good two-way player. Now, just to recap for people not big fans of the OHL, where he came from. Uh, born in Thunder Bay, first came to major prowess for with Westford of the TBHL over three seasons. Now, he graduated to the famous London Knights of the OHA <coughs> for three, uh, three seasons. In his draft year, Minnesota took him 105th overall. Uh, in the seventh round, I think they got a steal. He had 95 points that year, including 31 goals. Now, after several seasons in the minor and lower leagues, he finally made it to Major League Hockey with the Toronto Toros. Now, uh, Jacksonville Barnes, he played his rookie season with the AHL, 36 points in 51 games, 109 minutes in penalties. Now he had a cup of water with Toronto and 74 to Toros with a goal and three assists for four points. Now the Toros had taken him in the fifth round, 56 overall in the 73 draft, and he felt his career would be better off in the other league. Now in 75, his full rookie season with Toronto, he put up some great numbers, 22 points in 29 games, including 11 goals, and 6 goals in 6 playoff games. Now he played a majority of the season with the Mohawk Valley Comets of the NEHL with 48 points in 42 games. Now in 76, he played 65 full games with Toronto with 34 uh, points, including 12 goals, and 14 uh, points with the Buffalo Northsmen. Now when Toronto shifted to Birmingham, he decided uh, to uh, follow the team, and he had a career year in 77, 56 points in 79 games, including 20 goals and 166 minutes in penalties. But what was pretty weird about the 78 season, he played with the Brantford Alexanders for most of the season, with 35 points in 27 games, and had a five-game tryout with Colorado, uh, played three of those, and also played that year with the Phoenix Roadrunners. Now, he wrapped up his, uh, what do you call it, his minor uh, pro career with a one Steelers in 79 of the OHA. Now, uh, he was well known for his number 17. Now, he made the NHL All-Star second team in 75, and upon retirement, became the founding director of the Cumberland Barons Minor Hockey Club. He also served uh, as general manager of Gloucester and Ottawa of the CJHL. Now, when that team moved to Birmingham, he was eventually traded with Jeff Jacques to Edmonton exchange for Pete Laframboise, Danny Arndt, and Chris Evans, but instead chose to enter the NHL and never played for the Oilers. Now again, he also played on the Phoenix CHL team that folded on December 13, 78. Now again, nickname Leap and Low. You, knew, you had to see it to believe it because, uh, you know, not the biggest drink of water, uh, 5'7", 170, but boys, when he scored, what energy he would show to the fans was just tremendous. Now, like we said before, Nistico never signed with Minnesota, instead jumping to WHA with Toronto. After four seasons in the other league, his NHL rights expired and became a free agent when Minnesota did not offer him a contract for the 78th season. <coughs> so that's eventually the tryout with Colorado in 1977. Now, when he passed away, there was uh, numerous articles uh, in the Ontario Press. I'm just going to quote from him. Uh, again, the article that the OHL had did, again, calling me undersized ball of energy. He uh, recorded 169 points over 172 regular season game with the Knights. And these teammates, of course, included the great uh, skaters Dennis Marouk, Dennis Ververgaard, and Reggie Thomas. Now, uh, again, Nistico had been serving as director for hockey operations and assistant GM of the CCHL's Hawkesbury Hawks Junior A Club and his, on his passing. Uh, 
He had been involved in the CCHL as a GM with the Canada Stallions and the Gloucester Rangers, dating back to 2004. Now, Nistico had also attended a number of Knights alumni events in recent years. Now, an article in London Free Press, uh, alum, the Knights alumni head uh, and, and TV color commentator Rick Doyle told Ryan Payette of Lindor London Free Press, Lou is a great family man. He was very devoted uh, to his kids and grandkids. He was a really good guy, and this is unfortunate that we lose him way too young. And let me tell you, way too young, ladies and gentlemen, when you're only... Uh, you know, 67 years on this earth, and see how much uh, Nick did in that. I think that short time is is uh, very sad. Now, Reggie Thomas, a great player himself, said his team, uh, teammate Louie was a fireball. He put his heart out there on the ice. There's no doubt about it. He would get us and the fans going. Uh, he was a really popular player. He loved someone who was, uh, who was that enthused about the game, and he gave the same effort every night. Now, uh, the energetic pro career we're talking about. Uh, his fellow Rex Knights made Wayne Elder recalled. He skated fast and hit anything that moved. He was an exciting type kind of player. When the fans got going, that just fueled fuel his fire. As soon as he started the Lulu chant, that gave him another gear faster than anybody else. Now, uh, the 186 pro games with Toronto and Birmingham and the WHA again, three NHL games with Colorado, and again in the senior ranks with Branford and Welling. Now, uh, wherever he went, according to the free press, his London nickname stayed with him. He remained leaping Lou and retained that moniker as part of his social media handle. Now, Reggie Thomas said he'd score and jump all over the place. He had a heart of gold and his effort was second to none. He'd get going and you could have 1,500 to 2,000 people at the old Lincoln uh, London Gardens, and you think the roof is going to come off. Now, years later, when Mike Foligno uh, became known for jumping here after going to NHL ranks, it brought attention to uh, uh, to uh, to what Lou did. Now, Elder said Foligno only did it in one spot. Louis did it while moving. He would just keep on skating and jumping down the ice. That's where Leap and Lou came from, and we all fed off that. Now, uh, according to the Hawksbury Hawks, our, Hawks, our hearts are utterly shattered this morning to announce the passing of dearly cherished Lunistico, Hawks assistant GM. We have lost a colleague, dear friend, and a legendary hockey influencer. Our hearts go out to his family with sincere condolences. And this was November 27, 2020. Now, um, Anyway, uh, a lot of people feel he's going to make the uh, Don and the Brankley Wall of Fame at the Budweiser Gardens. I think so. Now, uh, again, uh, what a what a loss. And you know the hometown heroes I talk about here, Lou and uh, quite a few others. It's 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 really sad when these people pass away because not only did the person physically passes away, a piece of that era gets lost as well. And if anybody's a London Knights fan, you know that team, boys, got a lot of big fan base and the hard-working effort. You look all the NHLers that have put, uh, the players they put in the NHL over the years. But I was, I was, this is kind of a partial request. Somebody asked me, he said, you know, once he said, Jeffrey, where did Mike Foligno get this kind of jumping thing? Well, I said, maybe this has to do with Leap and Lou, because, well, the way Leap and Lou, Leap and Lou did it, I've seen the Toronto, Toronto, Toros and Bulls games. It has to be seen to believe. It's almost like a long jump. If that makes any sense, but he had a style of his own. But you know what? It would be kind of weird if he would have made the Minnesota team in the late 1970s. He would have been a great, uh, you know, a great player on the road. Not really uh, like a dirty player, but a player that wasn't scared to, you know, to, to take up for his uh, teammates. And uh, Colorado could use them, but Colorado, uh, I think at the time being 20, 25, 26, 27, they were looking at younger players on that third line, but like I said, you play in two major leagues, you play one of the greatest Ontario Hockey League teams of all time, you play in seven leagues in, in a decade, that's that's pretty impressive. So that's the story of the great Leap and Lou, thanks for listening ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and keep your stick in the ice. Bye!